Hello Helldiver, my name is Simon and today in this video I want to share my thoughts upon the stratagems when it comes to fighting the automatons on difficulty 7 or higher. My squad and I have been heavily testing all of the stratagems beforehand of me making this video and I was surprised to see how the ranking of this tier list turned out to be. But now, let's dive shall we? I will be ranking all stratagems from S to D tier while giving you some gameplay footage and thoughts on the stratagems. And keep in mind that this is my opinion, so there will most likely be some placement that you disagree with. But hey, that only means that Arrowhead Studios did one hell of a job making these tools for spreading democracy. So let's start off with the support weapons and the first one I will look into is going to be the recallless rifle. The recallless rifle I'll place into the A tier because it does one job very good but for everything else other support weapons can do it better. And that one job it does great is taking down the dropships. The weapon that does a better job at taking down the dropships however is the E17. And let me elaborate why I see this one being better and why it deserves being in the S tier. First of all, you can have a friend call down another support weapon for you that you can use until you see the notification for an inbound dropship. When this happens, call in the EAT so you and a teammate can be ready to take down the ships when they appear. When done taking care of the dropships, pick up the support weapon again you're left behind and start spreading democracy once again. Next up, we have the spear that I'm ranking B tier. The spear is suited to fulfill the same job as the EAT and recallers rifle but it comes with a lock system that often feels clumsy and makes you miss the spot you want to aim for. This often results in the dropship isn't taken down in a single shot and therefore makes the weapon less than mediocre at doing its job. The spear however can be used to take down fabricators which it does pretty good. Moving on to the auto cannon and this all plays into the ST. The auto cannon excels at dealing with everything that is walking in the battlefield and it comes with an ammo backpack. So you'll never find yourself in a situation lacking ammunition as long as you remember picking up the ammo packs scattered upon the battlefield. You can even spread the ammo backpack to your team and this will make you into an unstoppable killing machine when it comes to holding the line by having a teammate supplying you while shooting. Now let's talk about the anti-materiel <laughs> that the Frenchman will place into the ST. Just like the auto cannon, it will deal with anything walking on the battlefield. You have to be a bit more precise with the shots though compared to the auto cannon and the first person view can feel a bit clunky but with practice comes perfection and yes it can definitely also deal with turrets. Let me show you. Recently nerfed we have the raid gun, S tier. This gun's performance came as a huge surprise for me. It is absolutely amazing at dealing with anything and it's very unforgiving when it comes to not landing your shots precisely on the weak points. Just remember to switch it to unsafe mode and hold down the trigger for a little while before unleashing that error of magnetic lead into your enemies. Laser cannon, D tier. What a useless weapon. I expected way more for this gun, especially because it's pretty damn good at fighting the Terminates after its recent buff. But for fighting automatons, it ain't gonna melt it. Flamethrower, C tier. Flamethrower definitely melts the robots faster than the laser cannon, but it requires you to be so damn close to the enemies that you'll rarely get the chance to ignite the fuel before you've been cut up open into minced meat. Grenade launcher, B tier. It does the same job as the auto cannon, but it's just way harder to actually land your shots with this thing due to the drop off in the distance. One thing it does great through is taking care of the fabricators. MG43, C tier. And the same goes for the stalwart, also a C tier. These guns are fun to use, but it just doesn't deliver the punch on the battlefield. Most often you'll find that your primary weapons will be just as good as taking care of these metal canisters. Arcthera S tier. This weapon might be the best for taking out the battlefield fastest when it comes to the lesser and medium sized enemies. But where it will struggle is going to be the heavy enemies, that being the tanks or being the hulks, 
or the turrets. Some of these it can't even do damage to. Now, before you start smashing the comment sections, yes, I'm aware that currently the Tesla weapons are bugged and will cause the game to crash. But I'm not going to let that bug influence my tier list here because eventually it will be fixed. With the support weapons done, let's move over to the backpacks and we'll be starting off with the supply backpack. The supply backpack I'll rank C tier. We never use it and never find ourselves lacking ammunition. As long as you remember to scavenge for ammo and use a supply card in, you'll find more than enough ammunition. Now I will say that this stratagem might be higher on your list depending on the loadout you bring and I respect that. But I strongly believe that you'll be better off learning to play the game without relying on this stratagem. Jump Pack CT. The Jump Pack is a fun little stratagem, but it will rarely help you in dodging bullets on the battlefield. If you desire to play the game suicidal through and rocket boost yourself onto the back of a tank, then the Jump Pack Pack will be your desired choice. Rest on that, I don't see much use in it. Shield Generator A tier. Shield Generator was recently nerfed, but it's still very powerful against the automatons. If you're struggling with surviving the Automatron's Assault, then I will even say that this backpack should be seen as a must-have S tier for you. But over time and learning how to fight the Automatons, this backpack becomes less needed. Ballistic Shield, F tier. No point in taking this with you. If you want a shield, go with the Shield Generator. Guard Dog, Rover, A tier. The Rower is king when it comes to fighting off the horde of melee within the armies of the automatons, but it also does come with a downside. It'll make you easy to be spotted by the robots, and since you're trying to keep your distance when fighting the automatons, you'll often find your rower just flying by your side and not shooting anything. The same applies for the guard dog with the machine gun. With the backpacks done, let's move over to the sentries. And we'll be starting off with the auto cannon, A tier. What a wrecking ball this thing is. It'll just keep on hammering the battlefield until it's either empty or destroyed. As long as you're aware of the placement of it, it'll not disappoint you. Tesla turret, C tier. It'll do the damage, but it'll also be damaged as well very, very fast. Not only by the automatons, but also by you. One single shot from you can be enough to destroy it, and you'll most likely find yourself shooting in its direction since it needs to be so damn close to the enemies before it can hit them. Not only that, but it's also specialized in killing teammates. Now, there are some missions where this turret could find itself a better rank, if in the hands of a good player, but it only requires one bad play in your squad to destroy that well-placed Tesla. Jimmy, with the cluster bomb, I'm looking at you right now. HMG emplacement, D tier. Why would you lock yourself in place for using a gun when you can call down a gun that can shoot by itself meanwhile you're still running about and using your own guns? I hope this is enough to get my point through because if it isn't, nothing will convince you otherwise. Gatling Sentry, A tier. Use this instead of the HMD emplacement. Does the same, just faster, and doesn't require you to sit on it and babysit. Shield generator, B tier. Not as good as it is versus the Terminates. And as long as you got some good points where you can break line of sight with the enemies, I don't see why the shield generator is worth a stratagem slot. I'd honestly say you're better off just using the shield generator backpack instead. Landmines, C tier. Goes for the incendiary landmines as well. I hate these things. Like there isn't enough mines on the battlefield just sitting ready to blow your legs off. If you want to blow up machines with the sentry, just stick to the auto cannon sentry. Machine gun sentry, C tier. The Gatling sentry does this one's job way better. However, if you're still leveling in the game and can't unlock the Gatling yet, then this one is a good place to start until you can get yourself the Gatling sentry. EMS mortar, S tier. Best tool for locking down the battlefield, and it's amazing to be paired up with other sentries or cold-ins for more position. Mortar sentry, S tier. You can pop this thing down out of enemy sight, and it will just tear down upon the battlefield. Rocket sentry, A tier. It feels like a hit or miss, and by miss, I literally mean miss. I've seen this thing miss 4 out of 5 shots towards enemies being stationary, and at the same time I've seen it just absolutely devastate the battlefield. So again, it can be a miss or hit, depending on your luck. With the sentries done, let's fly into the Eagles, and we'll be starting off with the Eagle 110mm, and that's gonna be an S tier. This little bad boy is the best option you have at taking down the tanks. Multiple tanks at the same time. 
He can also be used against the Hulks, but if the Hulk is on the move, there's a chance that it'll miss the mark, so be aware of that. Eagle Strafe, D tier. It just doesn't have the firepower, and the Eagle Cluster will outperform this one at any time. Eagle Napalm, B tier. It has some usage, but it feels lackluster against the automatons. There are better options you should go for instead. Eagle Smoke, D tier. The smoke can be used for making some quick cover or break line of sight. The smoke is good at doing its job, but the question is, how good is this strategy working on higher difficulties? My team and I would rather just call in a bombardment and get rid of the mobs instead of trying to hide from it, just to have it sneak up behind us while dealing with another pack of enemies. Eagle Airstrike, A tier. Decent pick for delivering a quick punch to the battlefield or taking out the fabricators. Not much more to be said. Eagle Cluster, B tier. Amazing for taking down lesser enemies, but that is also where it stops. It barely does any damage to medium or heavy target, and it does zero damage to structures, fabricators, and turrets. Eagle 500kg, S tier. This might just be the most versatile stratagem in the game. It can deal with anything, and I mean anything. Even drop ships, if placed correctly. From the Eagles, we will move onwards into the Orbitals, starting off with the 380mm A tier. This is what you want to use on a big outpost. It's not very precise, so there's always a chance it'll rain down upon nothing and just be a disappointment. But when it does hit, oh boy, it can make quick wreck of an outpost. Walking Barrage, A tier. A lot more precise than the 380mm, but with less shots. Works amazing as well to be called in down upon an enemy outpost. Precision Strike, B tier. I see this one as a little brother to the 500kg Eagle. It's very precise, will take out anything, but has a small explosive radius. Rail Cannon, S tier. Fastest call in for delivering with hulks or tanks, but does come with a long cooldown. But absolutely amazing when you don't have the time to wait for an Eagle or time to do a well placed 500kg. Orbital Laser, S tier. Fast and delivery can take out multiple heavy enemies at one call in, but can only be used three times during a mission, and it will always prioritize the biggest targets nearby. Just don't get yourself caught in this path or you'll be turned into democracy bacon. Orbital Gas Strike, D tier. Does a fart on the map, stings a bit, and may kill some robots due to allergic reaction, but that's pretty much all it does. Just hope the wind doesn't blow it up in your face. Gatling Barrage, D tier. It's a waste of your stratagem slots. If you want something for lesser minions, go with the Sentry or Eagle Cluster. Same goes for the Air Burst, D tier. Orbital Smoke, D tier. Same applies here as for the Eagle Smoke. Eagle Smoke just slightly better since it comes with more charges before going into a long cooldown. Orbital EMS, A tier. Just like the EMS Mortar, amazing for locking down enemies. 120mm, C tier. Can take out most targets on the battlefield, but doesn't come with as many shots as some of the other orbital barrages. And now, last, we have the mech suit. This might just be either the best or the worst stratagem depending on what sort of enemy type you're fighting. It can clear out the entire map or get demolished within seconds, and by being demolished, I mean getting rocket down from full health to a wreck in just one single rocket pop barrage from the enemy. So if you are going to use the mech suit, use it very wisely and prioritize the enemies that are shooting rockets. This was my complete tier list for fighting automatons in Helldivers 2. I hope it was insightful and will help you in picking your arsenal for heading in to spread democracy on the automatons. If you found this video good and helpful, then please let me know in the comments. And if it didn't, well feel free to tell me as well. But please, be kind and keep in mind that this stratagem tier list is my opinion and I'm not trying to imply that this is the only way to become a proper hill diver. My name is Simon and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.